What's up, members of the Barrio? It's John coming to you from New York. And whenever I visit a new city, I always want to know where are the most essential places you have to visit. So today, to help you out, I'm going to be sharing with you 12 things you have to do on your first trip to New York City. Make sure to check out my other New York City playlists, all linked down below in the comments. Let's get to that list. If there's one thing New York City does better than anywhere in the world, it's pizza. And you can't say you've been in New York unless you've had at least one slice, but hopefully more. Not only does New York have the best pizza in the world, but it also has the best variety. If you want classic Neapolitan, no problem, get one of the three $5 pies from Keste. You want cheap, go to one of the more than $50 slice joints in the city, like my favorite, Percy's. How this is only $1 still shocks me. You honestly can't go wrong with any of the famous places, but I still stand by my favorite slice in New York, the Nana Maria from Bleecker Street Pizza. I don't care where you go though, just eat at least one slice of pizza and you can thank me later. Skyscrapers, a fundamental part of the New York City experience and something that I think you need to get a closer look at. One can only appreciate just how built up the Big Apple is from high above. And there's so many ways you can get this view. If you want the absolute best view in the city, I recommend Top of the Rock. I admit it's touristy and tickets start at $40, although you can find discount codes if you Google it, but the views up there are simply breathtaking. And if you don't mind spending the money, it's well worth it. A runner-up, One World Trades Observatory at $35. This is the highest view in the United States, and you just feel like you own the city. However, it's fully enclosed, which is why I put this as a runner-up to Top of the Rock. If money is an issue, you've got a few options. You could go to a rooftop bar and order a beer or cocktail. 235th has the best rooftop views for sure, and they allow children for Sunday brunch. Dear Irving's not too shabby either. If you're on a budget and want to get up there, a cheap option is to take the tram to Roosevelt Island from Manhattan. Just swipe your Metro card and quite an impressive view, I must say. You're gonna do a lot of walking in New York City, but this is one iconic walk that everybody's gotta try at least once. I encourage you to come early in the day to do this, unless you like huge crowds, but there's something special about walking slightly over one mile from Manhattan to Brooklyn. The views are fantastic and the photo opportunities, endless. And when you get to the Dumbo neighborhood of Brooklyn on the other side, there's plenty to do. This is definitely not something to skip on your first trip. When you think of New York City, Times Square literally may be the first image that comes to mind. Now, as a resident, I try to avoid the place at all costs, but if you've never visited before, you've gotta go at least once an extra credit to do it at night. While most locals shudder at the thought of Times Square, there's something surreal about the bright lights and craziness of arguably New York City's most famous destination. You've gotta knock this out at least once, and you should watch my tourist trap and scams video before you do to avoid some common issues. If you're a night owl, I recommend going right before midnight to see the Midnight Moment, the world's largest digital art display, which most have never even heard of, but just stop to take some photos and soak in the vibe. And once you've done it, you really don't need to come back unless you're bringing some friends on your second trip. It's the most famous park in the world for a reason, and you could spend an entire day there. We'll, we'll get started with that. You've seen it in movies, now it's time to experience it in the flesh. I did a whole video showing off many sites, so be sure to watch it later for even more ideas. But here's a few of my favorite things to do. Fishing in Harlem Mere, total cost free. 
Or how about renting model sailboats? Don't skip out on the conservatory garden, but from strawberry fields to having a picnic at Sheep's Meadow, you could easily, I repeat, easily dedicate an entire day to Central Park, and it really wouldn't be such a bad thing. It's crowded, it's touristy, but on your first trip to New York City, you've got to visit. You've probably heard of it by now, a one and a half mile elevated park almost hidden from the rest of Manhattan. While it's crowded, I have no problem accompanying my friends who are visiting because it's just so cool and the views are amazing. You could combine this with hopping around Chelsea art galleries on a Thursday night or visit Chelsea Market nearby and eat some delicious tacos at Los Tacos Number One. I may be a little bit biased since I live there, but walking around Greenwich and West Village in Manhattan to me is a requirement. I just love this part of Manhattan, which doesn't give off that big city vibe at all. You'll feel more like a local and there's so many cute shops to pop into. Try some coffee at Puerto Rico Importers. Relax in Washington Square Park and enjoy tons of live music. This area also has some of the highest concentration of pizza places in the world. If you like bookstores, Three Lives & Co. gives off a really cozy vibe. But if you ask me, just wandering the West Village is about as relaxing as it gets in Manhattan because there's more than enough hectic to go around. The Statue of Liberty may be the most famous icon of New York City, and there's a few ways that you can see it. I'm honestly not going to tell you to spend your money to go on a crowded boat just to see the statue a little bit closer. I always tell people to take the free Staten Island Ferry, sit on the right side, and get a pretty decent view from afar. But if this is on your bucket list, then you need to do it right. My friend Jacob Carlson did a whole video on how to get inside the Statue of Liberty to go to the top of the crown, and I'm linking to it with a card above. It costs just $21.50, you can only get it from the National Park Service website, but fair warning, this sells out months in advance as they limit it to just 500 tickets per day. This is definitely one of the more unique things you could do in New York and a photographer's dream come true. In fact, save a ticket for me because I've never even gone inside. It's not very common to suggest visiting a transit hub, but Grand Central Terminal is more than just a place to catch a train. While nearly one million people walk through every day on their way to work, it's also a popular attraction because of its architecture and history. We can start with admiring the world's largest Tiffany clock on the exterior, or looking at the Zodiac mural up above, one of the city's finest pieces of public art. Here's a fun one. Have a cocktail at the Speakeasy-esque Campbell Bar, which is straight out of the Gilded Age. Talk to your friend on the other side at the Whispering Gallery, and just wander around one of New York's most famous landmarks. A little bonus tip, the basement food court has some really great options like Shake Shack and Magnolia Bakery. New York has not only some of the most famous museums in the world, but also some of the most diverse options of them as well. You could dedicate entire days just to visiting museums in the Big Apple. There's the really famous ones, and you should hit up at least one. MoMA, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, or the Natural History Museum. Of course, if you want to go off the beaten path, there's every type of museum imaginable, from City Reliquary, which houses all sorts of oddities in Brooklyn, to my personal favorite, the Transit Museum, where you can sit in old subway cars, but whatever your taste is, there's a museum for you in New York. New York City has some of the best performers in the world living here, and you owe it to yourself to go to at least one show. 
I know tickets can be expensive, but I really push any visitor to New York to try to go at least once. If you want to save the most money, either visit one of the TKTS booths or use the app on your phone to see what shows have the biggest discounts. You could also buy directly from the app Today Ticks, which I highly recommend, but the performers are absolutely world class and going to a Broadway show is one of the highlights of many people's trips. Trips. To honor the history of New York City, this is one memorial I'm going to recommend you pay your respects to. I admit visiting here is a sombering experience, but honoring the many men, women, firefighters, first responders, and police officers that gave their lives that day is, as far as I'm concerned, a requirement for visiting New York City. The memorial houses twin reflecting pools and is absolutely stunning. As an optional add-on, you can visit the Memorial Museum located right next to the pools to learn more about the tragic history of that day or visit the Tribute Museum located a few blocks away and take a guided tour with someone who actually lived through the experience. I don't think a trip to New York is complete without including at least one of these in your itinerary. Be sure to check out my other New York City content, all linked down below in the description. Tons of ideas, tips and tricks for things to do on your first trip or any trip to New York City. Also tell me in the comments if I missed anything, is there something that you really need to do on that first trip to New York City? I'm curious. Guys, thank you so much for watching as always. Until next time.